Builder here. And in this episode of Zig and Death, we'll be talking about vectors and SIMD in Zig. Uh, first things first, I gotta give a shout out to Richard Sindelar, who made a donation to the channel. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. And um, to all those who want to pitch in and help out uh, so I can make more content like this, you will find the, the donation link in the description of the video and on the channel homepage. So um, Zig has a uh, built-in support for uh, what it calls uh, vectors. And um, it may be a little confusing for those coming from all other languages because in other languages like for example C++ and uh, Rust, a vector is basically what is uh, an array list in Zig which is like a global array uh, data structure. But in Zig, a vector is uh, a specific uh, structure that is capable of performing operations uh, by using the single instruction multiple data, SIMD, uh, functionality of the CPU, if it's available. And what that means is that um, you have several elements in a vector and you can uh, perform operations on, on a couple of vectors and uh, those operations, if the CPU has SIMD support, they will be performed on all the elements in parallel at once, okay? Which is a big performance uh, difference than if you have to perform the operations uh, element by element, okay? So if the CPU has the capability of, of performing these types of operations of SIMD, uh, using vectors in Zig can really boost uh, the performance of your program if uh, you have this type of situation where you can perform uh, some specific operations on several elements at the same time. So let's take a look at, at how we can define uh, uh, vectors in Zig we basically do this with uh, with the vector built in, and it's important to note that uh, the element type of a vector can only be boolean, integer, float, or pointers. Okay, so uh, vectors are limited in in that aspect. Um, it's not like an array that you can um, basically store any type of of of, of uh, data. In vectors, uh, given that uh, these are special operations that have to be supported by the CPU, um, the data types are limited to just booleans, integers, floats, and pointers, okay? So here we have an example of defining a vector of uh, booleans, okay? We're using the built-in here vector. The first uh, argument that we're passing here is the length of the vector, which has to be compile time known, just like the length of an array the length of the vectors is part of the type and the element type here which is bool okay and here you see an example of how to uh, define here uh, assign an initial value using the tuple literal syntax and we are assigning here the three elements true false and true okay um, next up here we are gonna have an example of how in zig you can uh, basically use uh, vectors and arrays interchangeably because the uh, arrays that have the same length and the same data type of the elements uh, as a vector, they, they can coerce to a vector. So for, for that example, we have here, we're defining uh, an array of three Booleans, okay? Using here the, this uh, array literal syntax here. And next up, what we do is we're going to be creating a vector here of three booleans, okay, as we specify here with the built-in. And we use precisely, we assign that array to that uh, variable of type vector, and the array will be coerced to the vector type without any, any problems, okay? And uh, then we're going to be uh, demonstrating one of the operations that we can uh, perform on vectors. Uh, here we have that uh, the, the bulls vec A and bulls vec B are both vectors of booleans. And uh, we are performing here the equality, the equal to uh, operator. 
we can basically perform all of the operations that you can perform on the element type of a vector, okay? And since we can compare Booleans with equality, well, we can then compare the vectors with equality. If we were if we were working with integers or floats, for example, we could use uh, addition, multiplication, division, subtraction. Okay, basically all the operations that can you can perform on the element type, you can perform on the vector itself. So here we're uh, comparing these two vectors, and what's going to happen is that all of these uh, comparisons for each of these elements within the vectors. Um, are going to happen in parallel um, if the CPU has that type of uh, capability. If it doesn't, then the ZIG compiler will basically translate this into an element by element comparison. Okay. Um, and here we uh, do a simple debug print of that uh, the contents of that vector that we uh, obtained here from this operation, and also the type of the vector. Okay. And then uh, we have a little example here of how we can coerce the vector back to an array. Okay, so here array the bool, bool array B has type uh, array of three bools, and we are assigning it this vector, this bool vec C, and that will be coerced to the array type, and then we print out the type of that array. So let's take a look here at this output, and as we can see here we have the contents of uh, the, the, the result of comparing those two vectors, okay, which is true, false, and true. And the type is indeed a vector of three Booleans, okay. And next up, uh, we have that array, and we see that in, in effect, the type is an array of three Booleans. So uh, we coerced that vector to an array of three Booleans without any problem, okay. Um, next up, what we're going to be looking at is uh, an example of arithmetic operations. Okay, we have here a vector of ints of, of, of u8s here, three u8s, and then we have another one here, and then here we add them. Okay, so as I said, uh, any operation that you can perform on the elements, uh, the type of the elements, you can perform on the vectors themselves. And if you have SIMD support in your CPU, this will happen uh, to all the elements at once in parallel, okay? And then we print out the output of uh, in fact C. Let's look at that here. Uh, this is this line that we have right here. And in effect, 579 is the result of adding those two uh, vectors, okay? Next up, uh, when you have the situation that, in, uh, for example, you want to, let's say you want to add or you want to multiply a vector by a scalar, a scalar is basically a single value. Um, you can't do that directly, but you have the, the splat built in, which will convert a scalar into a vector. And it'll use uh, the type inference here. Uh, we're defining here this constant called twos. And it's a vector of three u8s, and uh, what we're assigning it is the result of splat of this uh, literal two. So splat will turn this single two into uh, a vector of three uh, twos. Okay. Then we can uh, take that result and use it in an operation here with another integer vector. We have an vector a. We multiply it by twos, and then we. Uh, uh, print out the result and as you can see here it's telling us that in effect we have 2 4 and 6 which is 1 2 3 multiplied by 2 okay next up we're going to look at uh, the reduce um, built-in which basically goes in the other direction it basically turns a vector into a scalar value by applying some type of operation and the operations that are supported are OR, AND, XOR, MIN, MAX, ADD, and MULTIPLY, okay? And we're going to be showing here an example of using AND. We have this, uh, we're defining this constant called ALL TRUE. And because we're using the logical AND uh, on this uh, uh, vector of Booleans, this basically will perform the AND operation on all the elements which will require then that all of them have to be true, 
Okay, so, so the result is only true if all of them are true. And then we print out that. And then we apply the OR. And the logical OR will allow us to know if any of those elements is true, then we will have a result of true. And then we print out that. So let's take a look at those results here. All true, it says false, because indeed in that vector we have one value that's false. And any true is true because we do have a value of true um, in that vector. Okay. You can also uh, use array indexing with a vector syntax here. We're obtaining the second element here because it's zero based indexing. Uh, and that's another way that you can basically obtain a scalar value from and uh, from a vector. So here from bulls vec A. Let's look at uh, that here. Bulls spec A1 is indeed false. Okay. So that's another way to obtain a scalar from a vector. Here we have an example of using the shuffle built in, which will allow us, uh, allow you to change, uh, reorder um, the elements of a vector uh, by producing a new vector uh, with the new ordering. And the way this works is, that you provided a mask vector um, which will have uh, values of type i32 as we're doing here and depending on each of these values um, and, and the two vectors that you pass in to shuffle um, it will select either a value from the first vector or from the second vector if the value is positive Okay, zero or a positive number, um, it will select from the first vector. If the value is a negative number, it will select from the second vector. And, and basically, uh, the way it works is that it'll these values are indexes, okay? Um, so we'll be seeing, as, as, as we'll see here in this example, if we have negative one, this would be um, basically the uh, first element of the second vector, okay? And negative two would be the second and so on and so forth, okay? So here we have an example of how we can obtain a new vector by just reordering from a single vector. And we can do that by passing uh, uh, a vector of undefined here. Instead of ha passing a second vector here, we're passing undefined. And what that will do is it'll apply the mask uh, only to the single vector here, which is vector A. And uh, then it'll produce a new vector, which we are assigning here to res1, okay? And then we print out the results. So if we go here to our output, we have res1 is equal to hello. And um, here's a, a, a nice little example of, once again, we are coercing here. We are using here the as built-in to coerce this vector res1 to an array of five U8s. And then by taking the address of that array, we're basically producing a string, okay? A slice of U8s, okay? And that's how we can print this out here in the debug print using the S uh, format specifier. Now in this example, we are using uh, shuffle, but now we are using both vectors here, passing vector A and vector B with the mask, the second mask. And we are making use here of negative numbers. So we are uh, selecting here from the, uh, the second vector and, and when we have these negative numbers. And then we print out the result. And as you can see, in this case, it's world, okay? And next up, we have the select built-in, which is similar to shuffle, but in this case, select um, uses a mask, uh, which is a vector of booleans, okay? And when we, whenever we have a, a false, it's going to select from the second vector. Whenever we have a true, it'll select from the first vector, okay? So here are the two vectors that we're going to be using. And we apply here with select the mask and to both the C and D vector. And then we print out the result. And as you can see here, the result is SIMD, okay? Next up, we're going to have an example. Let's see here. We have this function here that's called ASCII case, caseless equal. 
and it's going to take two bytes, two U8s, A and B, and it's going to return a Boolean. And what we basically want to do here is uh, check if A is equal to B, uh, both uh, checking upper and lowercase versions, okay? And we can do that with SIMD uh, in parallel instead of uh, doing the comparison uh, first lower than upper. We can do that, do that at the same time by using this uh, SIM, SIMD facility. First of all, we're going to be checking, making sure that we're dealing with alphabetic uh, bytes here because we basically doesn't make sense if, if, if we're not dealing with letters in, in ASCII. Then we're going to be uh, uh, doing a short circuit check here. If, if, if they are exactly the same, then we immediately return true. Okay. Then, if that's not the case, we're going to be creating our vectors here. Our, uh, our two vectors are going to be uh, of length 2 and U8, the type. And in this case, the first one will just have that uh, A uh, variable twice. And in the second one, we're going to have the B variable. But in the first uh, case is exactly as we receive it. And in the second case, we are applying here this XOR operation with the 20 uh, hexadecimal and what this does is a little old ASCII trick which basically flips the case okay so if B was lowercase this will turn it to uppercase and if it was uppercase it'll turn it into lowercase and that only works with ASCII okay it does not work with uh, Unicode code points um, next up what we do is we actually do the comparison okay we compare the two vectors here and then we use a reduce, that's what we're going to return, with the OR. So basically, if any of, uh, uh, of these elements compare equal, we're going to have a true in this result vector. And when we do the, re the, the reduce with OR, with logical OR, any true will return true as the final result. Okay, So this basically uh, proves that one of those comparisons was true. So we have uh, an equality here of uh, a caseless ASCII character, okay? And uh, here, up here in uh, main, precisely, we do all these uh, checks here by making these uh, different calls here. And as you can see in the output, the output seems to be correct, okay? Here, uh, lowercase a with upper, we got true. Lower and lower, we got true. Upper and upper, we get true. Upper with lower, we get true. Uh, lower A with upper B, we get false. Lower A with lower B, we get false. Upper A with upper B and upper A with lower B, it, they are both false also. So with that, that's basically what I wanted to demonstrate uh, about the use of vectors and uh, the SIMD capability in Zape. As you can see, it's a really, uh, once again, straightforward, really simple um, to, to make use of, of this functionality in Zig. And if you have hardware that supports these uh, SIMD operations, then uh, I encourage you to investigate this uh, vector functionality and make the most of it. So uh, I hope you find this useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.